a mother's anger pours out. Gabby Petito's mom makes her thoughts known after learning the exact cause of her daughter's death. A few clouds and another mild overnight. How low the temperatures go by morning. And New York Live is with the stars of the movie version of Dear Evan Hansen. Why they decided to take on the Broadway hit. This is News for Now for October 13th. I'm Adam Cooperstein. And after getting new answers about the death of Gabby Petito, there are new questions. A Wyoming coroner's report says Gabby was strangled almost a month before her body was found. But who killed her? And what does this mean for her missing fiance, Brian Laundry? News for Jackie Beckford has the angry words from Gabby's mom. Gabby Petito's mother firing back Nicole Schmidt, texting, quote, his words are garbage to a WFLA reporter in response to the Laundry family attorney calling her daughter's death a tragedy and restating fiance Brian Laundrie's status as only a person of interest in the case. That is all we've heard from Petito's family after the Teton County coroner revealed the 22 year old's cause of death Tuesday. Cause death by strangulation and manner uh, is homicide. Documents from the coroner's office detail manual strangulation, throttling. Dr. Brent Blue says the Blue Point native died three to four weeks before her body was discovered in the Wyoming wilderness on September 19th. Petito was last spotted at a Jackson, Wyoming restaurant on August 27th, two weeks after body camera footage from Moab police show a visibly upset Petito during a domestic violence call. Where did he hit you? Don't, don't worry, just be we'll honest. Right. That was my face. On September 1st, Laundry returned to his parents' Florida home without her and then vanished himself a short while later. A warrant for bank card fraud issued for his arrest. He is in flight right now. Uh, certainly uh, evidence of flight is very important evidence. But who killed Gabby? Still not pinned down by police. The coroner says her autopsy was exhaustive. This autopsy uh, included a whole body CAT scan, uh, a, a examination by a forensic uh, pathologist. So uh, it was we pretty much covered all the bases. A law enforcement source tells News 4 a woman traveling with children reported another passenger for watching suspicious videos on his phone and then taking out an odd looking object and fiddling with it. Turns out that passenger was watching videos on how to set and repair an antique camera and the odd object he started working on yeah, that was the camera. No criminal charges are expected to be filed. Firefighters in New Jersey are now trying to figure out what started a fire in their own firehouse. This happened at the Donnellan Fire Station in Middlesex County on Tuesday. The department says they're still assessing the damage, but thankfully no one was hurt. It's still not clear how the fire started, but the department says neighboring departments will help out until they're back at full service. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa and today started like the last several days. We had some patchy fog, the low clouds, mostly cloudy skies, most of the day some sun getting through. That's how our evening's going to go as well. Temperatures staying close to 70 through the dinner hour, dropping only into the mid 60s in a lot of places with partly cloudy skies. I do think we finally get a break from some of that patchy fog that was developing seems like every morning this week and in fact a few clouds from time to time, maybe a passing shower well north and west. Other Otherwise, more of the same tomorrow morning. Some sun, some clouds breaking out uh, later on in the day, starting off at 63 in the city, some 50s from White Plains, Sussex, and Poughkeepsie into the lower 60s for Long Island and down the shore. Fans of the Broadway show Dear Evan Hansen call it life changing. And now New York Live shows us how it's actually changed the lives of the stars in the new movie version of the musical. On paper, a show navigating mental health, social anxiety, loneliness, and loss may not sound like the makings of a hit musical. However, audiences of Dear Evan Hansen would disagree. The Broadway show catapulted Ben Platt into superstardom, and now the Tony winner is reprising his role in the screen adaptation. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. You can reach, reach out. Listen, this was a life-changing show. It's going to be a life-changing movie. And I know that you said that Evan Hansen did change you, but can, can you just elaborate on that? I think it made me realize the ways in which I have difficulty connecting. I think I am generally somewhat extroverted given that I'm a you know performer and I'm used to 
conversing and performing and being honest and things like that. And so I take for granted the ways in which I am also an introvert. And I think it's made me have a new awareness of how important it is to kind of force yourself off that cliff and know that those brief moments of pain or discomfort can be the gateway to so much. Also helping to bring the musical to the big screen are Amanda Stenberg, Julianne Moore, and Amy Adams. Love it, I really, really love it. I was so, so tremendously moved by it when I saw it on Broadway. And it wasn't even the realm of my uh, thinking that it, that I would ever be in the movie of it. Because I can remember when I, when I saw that part and she sang that song, I, you know, of course, wept. And I was so struck by how empathetic these, these um, these writers were about a, a parent's experience. Amy, I know that you saw the show as well, you know, on, on stage. And I will say that for me, I processed the movie differently. When I watched it on stage, it was, I really process it through the experience of the of being an adolescent. I felt this huge responsibility and very much like Julianne, I just loved it so much. I wanted to do my best and I put a lot of pressure on myself. And then I kind of realized that that is how most parents feel as they want to do their best and they put a lot of pressure on themselves. So I just channeled all of that desire. Her need is sort of what has to drive Evan to the lie. And so um, her need has to be so great. And that was, um, that was devastating at times, you know. What's up, choir kids? If you love to sing like me, then NBC4 wants to hear your best song. Now it's your chance to enter the NBC4 Star Choir, the holiday singing competition. Winners will perform on Christmas in Rockefeller Center. Go to NBCNewYork.com slash choir and upload a video of your choir performing. You could be a part of New York's biggest holiday show. Star Choir, the holiday singing competition on NBC4 New York. Enter now. And watch the Kelly Clarkson Show weekdays at 2. He's just eight years old, his name is Tyrone, and just weeks ago, he had heart surgery. Now, he's back playing the game he loves already. News Force John Chandler introduces us to a young football player overcoming the odds. See that Brooklyn renegade wearing number two? Mark the horn! The one who's everywhere on the field. That's eight-year-old Tyrone Hollingsworth. They call him Juju, short for junior. Jerry, he love, he love football, though. He sure does. One, two, three. I like to run. I like to play and tackle. That's why I signed up for football. Juju's mom calls him always the first, always the fastest. But Brianna was worried she'd never again get to call Tyrone a football player. He was born with a heart murmur. It was never a problem until it became a problem in a game. In June, he had an attack so bad that his heart rate was up to 280 something beats per minute, which is damn near deadly. Tyrone needed heart surgery for a condition called Wolf Parkinson's White Syndrome. I tried to explain it the best I can to an eight year old. The only thing he knew in his mind that he couldn't play and he was not with that. <laughs> Dr. Barry Love at Mount Sinai Kravis Children's Hospital has treated him since birth. We saw that he had an extra pathway between the upper and lower chambers of the heart. Was there ever a concern for you about having him go back and play football given that it's his heart? So not after we fixed the problem. We can tell just from a, a regular electrocardiogram whether we fixed it and whether he's whether he's fixed or not. Barely two weeks after surgery, Tyrone was cleared to return to football. You good? He was good. It was just a shock. It was like, yo, mother medicine. Tyrone is back and fast as ever. Juju does what he does. He goes in for the touchdown and the game saving tech. Yep, that's Juju, putting his heart into the game he loves and sharing that heart with the ones he loves, like his teammate and cousin, Chase. You did really good and I'm proud of you. It warms our heart, I'll be honest with you. We thought he was done. But from the looks of it, Juju is just getting started. He's always high energy and that's what I love about him. Oh, My Scorpio baby. In Brooklyn. You play good, boy. John Chandler, News 4 New York. Well, thank you so much for watching News 4 Now. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.